Hey game developers, Bilal from Zenfinity.net and welcome to another Unity tutorial. Now in this video we're going to be creating a character controller using multiple different methods so that we can figure out which one is best for you. So we're going to be working mainly with the transform components and using various different functions there such as translate and move towards and we'll also be figuring out how to rotate characters. We'll also partially use the rigid body components so that we can determine if we want to use physics in our game or if we want to just stick with transformations. So let's get into the tutorial and make our example games. Okay, welcome to the editor, and before you get frightened at the fact that I have a project set up, I just didn't want to bore you with the details, so you can either follow along in the starter project that I have attached in the description below, or you can just go ahead and follow along in your project as these components do not rely on anything else. You can just go ahead and pull the scripts out of the video and put them into your project. Okay, so with that said, let's get started here and create our first script. And this is going to be called the player controller transform. And that's because this one is not going to use any physics or any rigid body. In this one, we're only going to be using the transform translate function. So let's open this one up. And let's go ahead and get started here. So I won't really be needing this start function here, but we're going to need a couple attributes at the top starting with some strings to know which axes we're going to use for input. So private string move input axis, and I want to make that a lowercase m, is going to be equal to vertical. And our turn, so that we can rotate, turn input axis is going to be horizontal. So if you don't know what this means, basically we're going to use the get axis function to pull values based on a name of an axis. So the vertical axis is usually triggered by um, W and S, so negative for S, positive for W, and negative for A and positive for D on the horizontal. Okay, so let's create a rotation right here, public float rotation rate equals 360. So this is going to be in degrees per second. Basically, if we hold down our horizontal axis for one whole second, our character should do a full revolution or rotate by 360 degrees. Okay, the last thing we're going to do here is write our move speed, move speed, which is going to be two, and that means two unity units, which are abstract units, per second. Okay, now in our update function, I'm going to format that, and I'll actually store the floats that I was talking about from getting an axis. So let's do float move axis equals input dot get axis move input axis. So all this is doing is going and grabbing a value between negative one and one based on if we're holding uh, the positive button, which would be W, or negative button, which would be S on our move input axis, which is vertical. Okay, so let's do the same for our turn axis here. Okay, and now we have uh, perfect references to these. So I'm going to go down and write some placeholder functions before I actually edit them. So let's make a private, oh, private void move. Oops, that takes a float input. And I'm going to duplicate this. And this one is going to be turn. Okay. And I'll write one more above these two called private void apply input. And that's just going to call the other two based on what our axes have. So we'll write move input as our first argument. And we'll write turn input as our second argument. And in the body, we'll call move with move input. Oops, move input and we'll call turn with turn input. Okay, now in our update function, let's just call apply apply input with move input and turn, oh, actually turn axis and move axis. Okay, so basically this is just going to every frame um, update our position and rotation. Um, based on what we actually write inside of move and turn. So for moving, it's actually very, very, very simple and you're just using a transform. Uh, we're just going to write in here transform.translate. Okay, 
And translate is, of course, a translation of our transform, which in English means we're going to be moving our character by a certain amount in a certain direction. So we want to use a directional vector here. Now, whatever we put in here gets translated to, or I guess converted to local space. So we want to use global direction. Um, so basically we'll use vector three dot forward if we want to move our character forward. And then we'll multiply that by this input value. And then we'll multiply that by our move speed. Okay, so that just means we're going to move this much. Uh, and, you know, in this direction, well, actually in this direction, but with this input that's between negative one and one. So it'll actually make our direction negative or positive based on which direction we're holding down. So it isn't technically per second. If we wanted to make it per second, we could write times delta time in here, uh, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Okay. So in our rotate function, or our turn function, we're going to rotate our character, and we're just going to use our transform.rotate function, which is very similar to our translate one, but just with rotation. So we're only going to rotate on our y-axis here, and we'll write input times rotation rate, and here we're going to use time.delta time, and this will actually make sure that we do a full revolution if we hold down for a second. I'll put a zero at the end here. Okay, now we can go ahead and attach this in Unity to our character so that we can see him move and rotate just as we hold the uh, vertical and horizontal axes. Okay, so click on our player here in the scene view and hit add component and begin typing player and we'll see player controller transform pop up. I'll hit enter and now it is attached to our player. So if I hit play we can see our character rotating in the direction I'm holding. So if I hold A, he goes counterclockwise and clockwise if I hold D. Now, if we go forward, oh, it looks like our move speed is very high. So I'm gonna go into the inspector here and where it says move speed two, I'll set this to point one and hit enter. Now our character is moving at a more appropriate rate and he's moving in the direction that we are facing, which we can tell based on this arm we gave him. Okay, so that's all fine and dandy, but if we want to add physics and make our character move based on a rigid body, how can we do that? So I'm going to go ahead and cleft click on our player here and hit Control D to duplicate him. And I'm going to deactivate the original one. So let's go ahead and set up a rigid body physics controller for our guy. So I'll remove this transform one and I'll add a rigid body component. Now, to make this look more realistic and less slidey, uh, I want to raise the mass to about two, I think, and we'll put the drag, which is most important, to about five. Okay, um, so now I'm gonna go to our constraints, and I want to freeze the position on Y and the rotation on X and the rotation on Z. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on our player controller transform here, and I'm gonna hit control D to duplicate this. Now we'll get errors here, but don't worry because we're just gonna go ahead and rename this to player controller rigid body. Okay, now it's important that we open this up and I'm gonna reload. Uh, and over here, I'm gonna change transform to rigid body. And we have to make sure that this is matching the name of the file, otherwise we can't properly add this component. Okay, so let's go ahead and change from this translation to an add force function. So what I'm going to do is have a reference to a rigid body here, private rigid body RB. And I'm going to add a start function to grab a reference to that rigid body whenever this script starts running. So rigid body dot, oh actually rigid body equals get component rigid body. Okay. So now we have a reference to our rigid body here. And in our move function, we can just change this by commenting it out or even deleting it. And then I'll write rigid body dot add force, add force. And now we want to use a similar kind of directional input here. So we'll do transform dot forward times input times move rate. Oh times move rate. Oh, actually it's move speed here. Um, and then at the end, uh, we don't really have to specify this as it's the default, 
But we'll write force mode dot force for the sake of clarity. Okay. So now what we're going to do is change our move speed to 10 in the inspector. And I'll do it here for consistency's sake too. So now let's go to Unity. And let's go ahead and click on our player. And let's add our player controller rigid body script here. And our move speed is 10. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we try to push our physics based player. And he's slow because of the mass and drag, which can be adjusted. Um, but it is working just the same as the other one, but with a more kind of sliding effect because we are adding force rather than just translating by a certain amount every frame. So let's go ahead and click on our player. And I'll try dragging our mass down to one and see how he gets that more sliding effect. So if I keep this mass at two and I raise our move speed to about 15, then we see less of a sliding effect. And we can try 20 to go even faster. But you get the idea. You can go ahead and tweak these values as you please and see how that turns out for you. Now that is actually going to be it for this tutorial. So if this helped you out, make sure to leave a like and hit subscribe if you want more videos like this. And please let me know if this helped you out or if it's too basic or too advanced. If you actually want to make your first game faster, we have a couple of links up here. The first one's a free ebook on all the tools that you need to create your first game. I'll send it to you if you go ahead and click on the card in the top right. And if you're interested in really speeding forward, you can go ahead and grab our first course that is currently 90% off. It's also in the top right. There's a sample video uh, from the course. Just click the card in the top right. Okay, so I'll see you next time.